there's a story. So, if you're going to be buying a house or a, a, a sectional title or whatever within an estate, a complex, whatever sectional title, right? Um, you need to be very careful and you need to make sure that you are... Sorry, guys. I need to just actually like... Yeah. So, you need to make sure that everything that they say is there, everything that the estate agent sells you, you need to make sure that you actually check it, right? So last year, I bought a house, a beautiful house. I love my house in a nature type of estate. So it's not really a nature estate as per se as other nature estates, but it's got a ravine at the bottom. So it's got a fenced out area. You can go and sit out there. There's water flowing. Hi, Gumnandi. It's great. Okay. It looks great. Um, but obviously, as anybody who would know, any estate that's close to a ravine or any type of, 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 of that kind of, uh, that nature of anything like a river or a, a feld or anything means that there is security issues, right? Now, obviously, I, I point that out when I came to see this place. I'm like, but aren't there any like serious security issues here? And the lady was like, no, not really. You know, um, we've got a very great security system that's up and running. It alerts the guard house. It will alert you in your house. And I'm like, okay, well, that sounds great. Um, my owners were uh, about to rent out the place when I actually moved in. So I did not actually meet up with any of the owners. Um, but I had a chat with the, uh, the, the previous owner on the phone and I asked him, have you had any security issues? And he said, no, we've had absolutely no security issues. But what should have been a red flag was that on the doors of, of every single door that I've got, every single glass door, sliding door, there's like a little alarm system thing. So if you tamper with the door and you push it open by force, the alarm goes off. That should have been a red flag. But I know because I was so excited to buy a new house um, and I love the house, I bought it, right? Within... Um, Two months of living here, we have our first break-in. Luckily, it's not by my house, and unfortunately, it is from it's it's, it's in one of my neighbors. And um, but what's funny is that when they break in happens, they break in into one of the houses, and they jump a house that was literally like got it was empty, it didn't have people, but it had furniture. But they've jumped that house. But that's a story for another day. Anyway. So immediately after that, we have an emergency meeting and we are talking about, no, the security has been compromised. We need to find a way to fix the security as quickly as possible. Okay, shop. We find, we, we call in um, service providers. They come and they check the security and they're like, okay, no, one of your energizers is not working. Okay, shop. We need to buy an energizer. We go look into the home association's bank account and there isn't enough money, right? Which then means that they're calling now for a special levy. This is now around about, we've now been toying with this idea around about December. It's December time. I am black. We've got a thing called a big days. Okay. Big days means that all your money is going to partying. All your money is going to drinking and all your money is kind of like accounted for because you also got to account for January the next year. Right now, obviously as a person who budgets all the time, I've got my budget by December. My budget is already set and I'm ready for it. We get a special meeting and they raise an, a, uh, this thing called a special levy. Now, I, I've lived in complexes before, but obviously I, I, I only owned my one complex, my one house towards the end of me leaving that complex. So I've never had an issue of, or I've never actually heard of this thing called a special levy. So they, they call and they're raising a special levy. This special levy is 10,000 rand. Let me tell you, 10,000 rand over and above the normal uh, 2.5 that we pay every single month for rates and taxes, right? Um, okay. So basically in December, I was expected to cough out 12,500. I felt really bad for that. There was a lady who had actually just moved in into the state, like literally a month before that. And imagine now a month in and you already have to pay this amount of money because obviously like me, she didn't check if the security actually works. Okay, sharp, no problem. Um, we pay the 12,000 rand. I, in January, we have another break in. Something else is now broken in the security. Okay, we need more cards. Now we have to pay um, from the homeowners association um, bank account. We need to pay for additional cards, which means that we basically are depleting the money that we are paying as part of our levies to have these special cards. And then um, sometime this year, again, something happens. Someone breaks in again. They call a meeting and now they want to raise another special levy. 
Guys, I couldn't believe my eye. Oh, by the way, in January, when that first, when the second incident happened, they raised the levies to now 3,000 rand a month. So we were all now paying 3,000 rand a month. And we had gotten new owners in the complex, which means that there were more people now being able to pay. But we've depleted that amount of money from getting additional guards and all sorts of things and all sorts of things that were just coming up and popping up. Oh, then somewhere in the last few months, our garden guy, he does the garden, does the swimming pool, and basically like does maintenance around the area. Says, no, I have, I'm from, I'm Malawian. I haven't been home in five years and I need to go home for a month. This man disappears for a month, which means, it was even more than a month. I think it was like two months. For two months, we did not have a guy cleaning our pools. We did not have a guy doing our gardens. So basically, grass is dying because... All in honesty, even if I have time to do the garden or the grass, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to clean a pool, guys. I never had a pool in my life, okay? When I moved here, I was told that there is a service, a garden, and a pool service that I would be paying for with my levy amount, with my money, the, the, the 2.5 I was paying, which, which then changed the 3,000 rand. Now, all of a sudden, I've got no person. And guess what? Management is not hiring a person to do these things. So basically, now I'm stuck for two months with no garden services, with no pool. So what happens then? It's an additional ad cost because now I need to bring in somebody else to do it. I need to, now my grass is dead and I need to re chala grass. I need to plant grass again. Where have you ever seen somebody planting grass, guys? Planting a whole grass, guys. Chani. Imagine. And you know how expensive grass is in the suburbs? Like, grass is expensive here. At home, you just go to the bushes and pull a few thing, roots of grass and you can plant it and it will spread out. Ah, not in the suburbs, babes. In the suburbs, you buy blocks of grass, okay? Blocks of grass. And they're expensive, okay? We won't even go into the pool at how much it is just to clean a pool. Okay, so, fine. So, now there are meetings and people are calling for another special levy. Guys, they're calling for a special leave. This special leave is going to cost 22,000 rand. They're like, no, let's separate it by month. So every single month, let's pay 11,000. This is over and above the amount of money that you're paying every single month anyway. So, listen. Oh, by the way, we got our, our, our security finally up and running. So now we're just waiting for the next time it actually breaks again so they can raise another special levy. So I'm just saying, guys, I'm just saying, learn from me. Make sure that the things that they say are available are up and running correctly, okay? Make sure that you do not end up with unforeseen costs that you did not plan for because you did not check and double check and do what you're supposed to do. Because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. I can't go back to the old previous owners and say, you guys sold me a house in an estate that was broken. Hmm? I can't because they were selling the house. They were not selling the estate. So it's very, very important that while you are buying a house, also look at the estate. Even outside, look at the roads, what's happening, the maintenance of the place. Because at the end of the day, if the estate is not taken care of, right? So for instance, we had uh, city of Johannesburg doing piping outside our estate and they put out all the bricks and all sorts of things. So now it looks like a mess. And we're waiting for them to fix it. And we're not putting pressure on them to fix it because basically we can't sell any, well, the state guys cannot sell any more houses in the state because people drive past and they're just like, ooh, chaos. But also, if you are in, if you have to sell now, imagine how hard it will be for you to try and sell at the right price if it looks like that. If plants are dying, if there's just soil outside, sand outside, bricks piling outside, it just looks untidy. So it's important that you need to make sure that whichever estate complex, whatever it is, that is sectional title and is enclosed, that you're buying it, make sure everything that they tell you that is supposed to be working is actually working. Go and speak to the homeowners association. Find out how they're running their bank accounts. Find out if the electricity is running properly, water is running properly, if your piping is correct. Find out about the security. Find out about everything because it's really unforeseen costs that you do not need. And let me tell you, it's stressful. Trust me. I'm so stressed. Because every month, something else is coming up.